Hello friends, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to show you the best places to visit on coastal Maine. Maine, the way life should be. So we're gonna start this video by heading from north to south along the coastline. The first stop is at West Quanty Head Lighthouse, located in Lubeck, Maine, right on the border with the Canadian Maritime Provinces. It was built in 1808. Our next stop is in Acadia National Park. Here we're going to visit Cadillac Mountain for sunrise. In order to do this during the height of the tourist season, you're going to have to get a timed entry pass from the National Park Service at recreation.gov. Cadillac Mountain is the highest point on the eastern seaboard of the United States and offers magnificent views of Frenchman's Bay and the islands therein. It's also the first place in the continental United States where the sun is going to rise. Next, we're going to do some hiking in Acadia National Park. There are lots of wonderful trails in the park. Here's a view of Eagle Lake. Starting at Sand Beach, you can climb the strenuous Beehive Trail for beautiful views of the Atlantic Ocean. These scenes are along the Scudic Peninsula, which is on an eastern part of the National Park. There's a great little hiking area around Sur de Monts Nature Center. Here you can take the uh, trail through the wild gardens of Acadia National Park. You can also walk on a warp walk through these birch forest. Driving on the one-way Park Loop Road, we are heading down to Thunder Hole, where the waves come crashing in between the rocks, and a high tide makes a loud crashing sound. On the western side of Mount Desert Island, you can go swimming in Echo Lake. Great way to cool off on a hot summer's day. Also located on the western side of Mount Desert Island, there's the town of Southwest Harbor. And just south of there is the seawall area where at low tide you can go and explore the tide pools.
This area is Sand Beach, and here we took the Great Head Trail for views of the rocky coastline and the ocean beyond. You can also hike to the top of the South Bubble, and this is known as Bubbles Rock. There's beautiful views of Eagle Lake. One of our family traditions when we visit Acadia National Park is to sit on the Adirondack chairs outside Jordan Pond House and then to go and get a table outside and have some wonderful popovers. Stop. When the blueberries are in season, you can also get some blueberry cobbler a la mode. Another popular hike is the 1.5 mile round trip hike all the way around the edge of Jordan Pond. You can also rent bicycles or bring your own and ride the many carriage trails around Jordan Pond and Eagle Lake. No trip to Bar Harbor, Maine will be complete without a stop at one of the lobster shacks. We like Trenton Bridge Lobster Pound, which is a family run business. Been in the family for several generations now. And it's right before the bridge going over into Acadia National Park. Probably the best place for sunset in Acadia National Park is at the Bass Harbor Lighthouse. Parking is limited here, so make sure you get here early and then scramble down on the rocks for beautiful views of the lighthouse as the sun sets down behind the horizon.
several other places for sunset is at Bass Harbor itself and the seawall area. You won't be alone here. There are going to be a horde of other photographers. And today we also happen to witness the rising of a full moon. Heading south along the coast, we next stop at Camden Hills State Park, where you can pay $6 per person to drive the auto road up to the top of Mount Batty. Here you'll have excellent views of the harbor in Camden you can also take some of the hiking trails and get good views of Lake Maguntacook. Just outside of Camden is Barrett's Cove, where you can actually go swimming in Lake Maguntacook. The water is always refreshing here, a sandy bottom with a little bit of wood chips in the bottom of the lake. There's always a diving platform that you can swim out to, and there will always be a lot of people there sunbathing and enjoying a quiet afternoon. It's totally free to go swimming at Barrett's Cove. Next, we drive into the cute little town of Camden and walk around the harbor there and up and down Main Street, stopping at this time to get a cupcake at Laugh Loud Smile Big. Heading farther south down the coastline, we arrive at the town of Rockland, and here we take the hike out to see Rockland Harbor Breakwater Light, a historic lighthouse complex at the end of the Rockland Breakwater and the harbor of Rockland, Maine. This lighthouse was established in 1902, and you have to walk out on these big stone bricks for about a mile to reach the edge of the lighthouse.
stopped in the town of Rockland to get some more lobster at Claw's Lobster House. And we had this amazing, beautiful view of the harbor from our high top table. Also located in Rockland is the Farnsworth Art Museum and YS Center. The Farnsworth Art Museum has a permanent collection of artists known for their American art, such as Gilbert Stewart, Thomas Sully, Thomas Eakins, Fitz Henry Lane, and of course, Andrew Wyeth. Located in Rockland Harbor, you can also visit the Owl's Head Lighthouse, which was originally built in 1825 and reconstructed in 1852, standing 100 feet above the water. Located at the entrance to Muscongas Bay in Bristol, Maine, is the Pemaquid Point Lighthouse, which was commissioned by John Quincy Adams in 1827. However, the original lighthouse began to crumble as it was salt water was used in the water mix and the lighthouse needed to be replaced in 1835. The original light in the lighthouse was a parabolic reflector lit with candles at a visibility of about two miles. However, in the early 1850s, Augustin Fresnel invented a better kind of light that focused the light onto a Fresnel lens and this Pemquid Lighthouse was equipped with the fourth order Fresnel lens in 1856. It is one of only six Fresnel lenses still in service in the, in the state of Maine. The Pemquid Lighthouse is featured on the Maine State Quarters coin on the back side of the quarter. The Marshall Point Light Station is a lighthouse located in the entrance of Port Clyde Harbor and it was established in 1832. Heading south we arrive at Booth Bay Harbor which is a popular tourist spot and also a yachting center. Located here you can visit the Maine State Aquarium or you can look across the harbor to the island of Southport and see the Burnt Island Lighthouse. No trip to Maine will be complete without stopping in the bustling town of Portland. And while here, you want to make sure that you visit the Portland Art Museum. This is a small museum, but it really packs a punch and has all sorts of amazing artwork. I was super impressed by it, and I've been to some of the finest art museums throughout the world. The museum features American art by Albert Bierstadt and George Ennis, as well as Impressionist paintings by Claude Monet, Paul Cezanne, and Pierre Renoir, 
There is also a work of art by Vince Van Gogh and Pablo Picasso. You don't want to miss this museum. It's really quite an amazing place. We also had a great time in Portland at the Portland Schooner Company by taking a, a sail on the schooner Wendamine of Casco Bay at sunset. Here you're going to be allowed to help to raise the sails and you can learn how to how to run one of these beautiful ships and just enjoy the sunset, bring your own wine and cheese and have a little picnic on board. Great time on the Portland Schooner Company. Probably my highlight of the trip to Maine was at Portland Head Light, which is located in Cape Elizabeth, Maine, just south of Portland. And the Portland Head Lighthouse uh, is at the edge of Casco Bay. It was commissioned by George Washington and construction began in 1787 and was completed in 1791. The Portland Head Lighthouse stands 80 feet above the ground and 101 feet above the water. It's located in Fort Williams Park, which also houses the Goddard Mansion. And it was commanded by the 1st Maine Voluntary Cavalry Regiment for three months during the American Civil War. Fort Williams operated from 1872 to 1964. Portland Breakwater Light, also known as Bug Light, is a small lighthouse located in South Portland, Maine. It was first built here in 1855 as a wooden structure, and then it was reconstructed in 1875. The new lighthouse was made of curved cast iron plates. Also located in Cape Elizabeth is the Two Lights State Park. The park's name originated from the twin lighthouses located nearby at the end of Two Lights Road. These lighthouses were built in 1828 and were the first twin lighthouses on the coast of Maine. Next we head south to Cape Porpoise near Kennebunkport where you can get views of the Goat Island Lighthouse. The Goat Island Light was established in 1835. The original station was upgraded in 1859 to a current brick tower with a fifth order Fresnel lens. Kennebunkport is a seaside scenic town located in southern Maine. It's known for its beaches, sea captains' mansions, and its lively downtown with shops and galleries. One of the most famous landmarks in Kennebunkport is the Wedding Cake House. Wedding Cake House was built for George Washington Bourne by his father as a wedding present for George and his new bride Jane in 1825. The icing on the cake was added 26 later after a fire destroyed the barn. Located in the coastal town of Agunquit along the Marginal Way Cliff Walk is this really small lighthouse known as the Lobster Point Lighthouse, built in 1948. One of the most photographed lighthouses in the world is the Nubble Lighthouse, located at Cape Nettick in York, Maine. This lighthouse was built in 1879 on a tiny offshore island, or Nubble as it was known. It features a Victorian keeper's house with a gingerbread trim and a lantern with a miniature cast iron lighthouse on its railing. Thanks for watching this video. We appreciate your support. Please give us a like and hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner where the van icon is. Until next time, happy travels.